Audio engineering is becoming sexy, and people don't know this. I think that we are going to actually change the way audio engineering jobs are going to be, and love to be playing a big part of that. Hi, everybody! Welcome to the audio platform category. I'm super excited to be with Chin. Chin is the CEO of DSP Concept. Chin, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Kyle. Why are we having this conversation? We looked at uh, well over 100 companies in the audio platform space, and one of the companies that really stood out to us was DSP Concepts. They built a really impressive platform with, I think, a really bold strategy about building a tool that allows you to engineer audio in a way that you've never been able to do before. And you have a number of features that go with that that I think are really cool. And we have some videos that we're going to share that. I think the audience is going to be absolutely blown away by the tools that you built today. But before we even jump into questions, we have a great video already to showcase who is DSP Concepts. We're going to jump into that real quick, then we'll jump into questions. Sounds good? Sounds good. Hi, I'm Paul Beckman, the founder of DSP Concepts. We're proud to be a BMW iVentures portfolio company. Along with investment from consumer electronics giant Sony Innovation Fund, and others in the semiconductor industry, we're here to streamline and reduce risk for audio product developers. DSP Concepts has shipped literally millions of products with top tier consumer and automotive customers. This presentation focuses on our automotive activities, but there are similar benefits for our consumer customers. Let's get started. Your car is your most complicated audio system. Most people are surprised to learn this, but your car is packed with audio technology. To start with, it contains a home theater system and voice conferencing for phone calls. Soon, you'll have a built-in voice assistant and advanced technologies like road noise cancellation, multiple zones, and in-car communication. This vehicle is all electric and yet generates synthetic engine sounds to alert pedestrians and, I have to admit, to make the vehicle more fun to drive. Sound is part of the emotional design of the vehicle. Audio development is currently fragmented with a complete lack of standards. DSP Concepts is changing this with our revolutionary Audio Weaver platform. Design your system graphically using our extensive set of audio processing functions. A, B between different designs to find the one that sounds best. No more guessing, you hear the differences instantly. Use the graphical interface to visualize the processing and debug sound quality issues. We also have a full suite of automotive tuning tools. You start out by measuring the acoustic signature of your cabin, then optimization algorithms automatically take you 90% of the way there. You then do the final last percent by polishing the design by ear. All of this is available from DSP Concepts. AudioWeaver as a platform can be used to deploy across multiple processors and architectures. You can use the same tools for low-end to high-end designs and steadily add features. We can also deploy in multiple processor cores, allowing you to distribute audio processing loads efficiently and take full advantage of all the processors in your system. This flexibility allows OEMs to own the audio experience and find the lowest cost solutions. AudioWeaver is not just a tool, but a comprehensive platform. We're partnering with leading audio brands, semiconductor partners, system integrators, tier ones, and third-party algorithm suppliers to provide the most comprehensive automotive audio solution available. BMW iVentures has been a key investor and has helped us to achieve our goal of becoming the standard platform for audio development. Contact us to see how we can help you save costs through efficiency gains and implement innovative technology into your next product. Fantastic video. Is there anything else that you wanted to add on top of that? Of who is DSP Concepts? DSP, DSP Concepts are, is a software company, but software comes in many different layers. And we're unique in that we're, we are creating a industry standard platform for embedded audio. And that's the part that is actually hard to do, is how do you do things on the chip side, on the edge? That's what we call it. And as opposed to creating applications for your, you know, iPhone or your apps at the apps layer. So we're in the part that is actually have to deal with physics, with the chips, playing Tetris to make sure the code is optimized and functioning very quickly. And also working with tuning the actual acoustics 
that uh, every audio product comes in. I'm curious, is there a backstory for why you start DSP Concepts? Yeah, the backstory is Paul graduated. By the way, Paul is my husband. Graduated from MIT with a PhD degree from uh, under Professor Alan Oppenheim, who is the founder pretty much of this entire field. And uh, it's a uh, very few select people that get to uh, work under him. And after he graduated, he dreamed of changing the world with his newfound expertise and went to work at Bose under Dr. Bose, uh, who was also an MIT professor. And when he got there, he realized that he was spending all of his time writing assembly code to try to get things to uh, perform faster, more efficiently. And throughout this process, he realized like, no, this is not the way to do it. And in the wor other fields like graphics, okay, it's very clear that when you're implementing like video game, there's a set of people who are creating the storyboard, the storyline, and they don't have to worry about how graphics get rendered because there are other people are worried about how to render the graphics efficiently on the chips. In the world of audio, there is no such standard. So if you wanted to implement any audio product, you start from the top, you have to conceptually think of what features you want, and then you got to program it all the way, you know, to the chip level. And of course, in big companies, um, they have people doing different types of jobs, but then the process is still very waterfall. So it actually hampers audio innovation. Our dream is to change that, and we want to change the world. We want to make the world a better place by creating audio of things. We want to put audio into every place efficiently, fast, and in, uh, risk-free for the product makers. No, fantastic. And it, it, it's interesting to see how you've seen it in the beginning and realized the challenge. And that's actually a great segue into my next question. But it's impressive that you've taken this bold strategy as being the industry platform that really encompasses that whole segment of being able to innovate on audio but without having to deal with all the, the heavy lifting and the challenging. And you may have already pretty much answered this question, but I wanted to just dive into it a little bit deeper. It's just can you elaborate why embedded audio development is so challenging and you know why your platform makes it so much easier? Yeah. So if you think about it, audio is so intricately tied to the acoustics. You just can't help, you know, that. So it, unlike programming, that's usually if you're doing at a data set level, you're just dealing with numbers. But with audio, we all know that if you experience a pop and click, your, uh, your ears are very sensitive. If you're looking at video and they drop a frame here and there, your eyes very quickly adjust and you don't even notice it. But audio, you, we, you cannot allow that. So in order to have that whole thing work really well, you need all different skill sets. And each one of these skill sets is a science in itself. So you have acoustics people who know how to design the acoustics and how to push the air to create the, the sound. Then you need people, so you got mechanical engineers, then you need electrical engineers who are taking up the, the designs, the boards, and then they have to put in, install all the chips, the capacitors, the resistors, the microphones, and connect it all together. Then you got people who now have to write the math that takes all the different waves and know how to subtract them, filter it, and all that stuff with bouncing waves, okay? It's just like when you drop a rock into a water, waves go out. Now, how do you capture all these different waves, information into the right format that you want? So that's a set of people, PhDs types, okay? Very mathematical, but then they don't write code because you know, they don't want to write, play the Tetris game to make things fit. So that's yet another set of skill set. And each one of this is by itself, just a whole big skill set. At the very last stage of the game, you have people who are audio engineers. They don't know anything about writing code or DSP, but they're the ones that go in and they know what sounds good. There's psychoacoustics involved. So you want to bring all this set of people together. How do you do that? We worked with the biggest names in, in the audio industry that we tune the car, for example, 
in the Tesla and I met with some of Elon's friends in the music industry. They wouldn't know how to change any code. Imagine if they had to go that, do that. They would have to tell the DSP engineer, oh, I want this to sound warmer. You need to bring this up. And then somebody has to go and change the code. This is where the whole concept came in. No, you could take this and they know how to tune it. So they just know how, what to change. You don't need to write any code. And so this is why it's, it's very difficult to bring all of these different disciplines together onto the same platform. And which is also why this allows the innovation to happen, because now you can have collaboration across different disciplines. This is one of the things that it's, uh, and maybe it's just because we're now seeing this evolution of audio becoming so much more important in our lives, the complexity of this industry, how you're absolutely right, being able to match from the hardware level with the actual intricacies of just dealing with the audio itself and making sure it sounds right, regardless of what platform or what setting it's in and being able to balance all of those things in a way that it all works is really difficult. And that, that itself is very hard. But one of the things that I wanted to highlight, especially for the audience, is we spend a lot of time looking at a lot of different software companies and generally the evolution, you see it more on enterprise infrastructure, is it's difficult to work with a variety of different hardware and making sure that the data works and, and, and communicates with the right different platforms and then being able to have an interface that makes it a little bit easier. And you build such a simple interface that allows individuals to change, edit, remove, just alter different various forms of audio and every level of that segment in, in this almost this no code interface. And like you said, anybody almost has the ability to interact with your platform. On top of that, you're building or you provide your users with pre-built modules and designs that they can work with, to build out different audio tools and, and sets and themes. I just wanted to highlight this and maybe you could continue to uh, elaborate on this, but it's really an impressive approach that you took as a software company to kind of mold all these things together, the complexity of dealing with audio, but doing it in a format that allows your user base, regardless of who they are in the ecosystem, to interface with it and be able to work with audio in a way that they probably wouldn't have been able to before. Exactly. And let me give you an example. Okay. This is a real life example. A few years back, we went to BMW, which now when, on your video, you see how BMW is one of our investors. So the first time when we went to BMW, we gave them a workshop to show them, oh, this is what Audi Weaver can do. So in the morning, it was a workshop to present Audio Weaver and some demo. Then we said, lunch break after lunch, let's come back and bring a project you're currently working on. Okay. And then let's work on it together so you can experience it. So after lunch, the guy comes back. He's, I've been working on this. Uh, I've had this idea for a uh, road noise compensation for uh, speed dependent EQ. That I've had this idea to improve the sound, but and then he came with pages and pages of a block diagram, which he sketched out and he's, can we work on this and see what that looks like? He's, he asked very tentatively, well, so when can you come back and show me, when can you show me this, my idea implemented? Basically we're like in about 20 minutes. <laughs> okay. So dragged out the block, built up his idea. He was floored. He was like, normally this would go be months before I even can hear anything. It's like, normally he has to go to the, the tier one and beg them to say, oh, could you implement this? And then he would have to wait until the engineers actually go through and implement it right up the pro. And it's a hardship for them to do that. Here is no, he can just try out his ideas. And in 20 minutes, it's like, I have never heard my own ideas. I just can conceptually think about it. And so this is like cutting down from months of waiting to even see if your idea makes sense to instantaneous pretty much. It's a, it's very impressive. And especially for the complexity of the product and also and, and for those maybe that are not in the industry or not in the audio space, it's very difficult. It, it, not only to get sound right, but also working with a variety of different hardware. You're in any product that has the ability to produce audio and 
matching those things. It's like building out a giant database to do business intelligence. It's almost the same level of complexity. And so the fact that you built a fantastic interface that makes that whole process really easy and being able to explain that like that is, is incredible. I can't do justice talking about all the features of your platform because I think you have a ton. One, obviously, is the interface, the way in which users can build any basically audio tool that they'd like with no code. Um, but you have a number of modules in that. I'm just curious, is there any features that really resonate with, uh, with your customers? Yeah, I'd like you to show another video. And before you show it, I'd like to explain. So you guys have seen sort of these voice products taking off like Alexa and Google smart speakers. And what's happening is you have the cloud-based artificial intelligence and the whole machine learning based. Now you can talk to a machine that's coming to because of just the convergence of all the technologies happening. You got the internet, you got the cloud, you got connectivity. So now we saw an example of the product that Amazon makes, but the complexity of adding voice into a audio product is actually much, much higher. So to, to the fact that We've had customers who want to add voice to their product and they, they get scared because the moment you think you're going to put in a microphone into a product, it sounds taunting because anything, like I said, everything's got to be lined up. Otherwise the product won't work. So that what that means is it adds additional risk to the product makers. So with DSP Concepts Audio Weaver, that risk is completely removed. It's like you can predict and with very precise timelines, like basically we're, when we come in to help you add voice to your product, we're not the, the what do you call the long pole in the tent, okay? <laughs> like we're the least of the, the worries, okay, of, of what happens. So on the video you're gonna show is this, how do you make voice work in real life situations? And real life situations, unfortunately, is noisy. Okay, you want your voice to work in the car when the windows are rolled down, when there's other noise going on, or maybe you're playing a radio and you just want to interrupt the radio to talk to it. And maybe the key thing is if you know what the output is coming out, then that's good. Then you can cancel that signal out. That's called we call acoustic echo cancellation. And that's been done for years and years. The problem is what if the noise is outside of your control? It's another device that is not at all controlled by you. So you now have, don't have control over that we call noise. So this kind of situation happens, for example, in a lot of homes, the TVs are on all the time. Okay. And they want to turn on the air conditioner so they wanted to add voice because now you don't have to look for the the remote you can just talk to it and and control the temperature and have it go up well it turns out that it doesn't work because the tv is always on and you're in the living room you want to turn on so it doesn't make sense now you got to have a quiet environment before you can talk to your machines and so we came up with this thing called adaptive interference canceller so our algorithms basically can listen and figure out like, oh, we you should ignore that, you know, that noise. And so that's the, maybe you can show the video and that is created using Audio Weaver. Hi, this is Paul Beckman from DSP Concepts. I'm gonna be showing you our talk to far field voice solution for set top boxes. The device here is sitting in front of the TV. It has a six microphone circular array and the sound you're gonna hear, the movie sound is coming out of the TV and the device doesn't have a reference signal. So that's actually a very challenging thing to do. Uh, the loudspeaker there, you're gonna hear the result from the Amazon AVS, but this system is generally a microphone cleaner and will work with any cloud service provider. I'm gonna go, go ahead and start the movie. must confront the reality of oh, interstellar a, travel. It's a capital of Germany. Marsh. Germany's Alexa. capital city is Berlin. Forever. Alexa. It's a capital of Spain. Spain's capital city is Madrid. Oh.
Francis Capital City in Paris. Russia's capital city is Moscow. You know what I see? Losers. The Lions give you guys a chance. The Jews' capital city is Tokyo. Something bad? Bit of both. Oh, what the hell? I don't got that long a lifespan anyway. China's capital city is Beijing. My dear Penguins! Does such a good job that the microphones are able to pick up my voice even in the presence of loud interfering sounds. And this is essentially a microphone cleaner so that the cloud ASR gets a very clean signal and can understand my queries even from across the room. Thank you. It's really impressive how you can stand on another side of the room with the volume so loud and just whisper. And it, it, it can hear you and understand what you're saying. And that's uh, an impressive one engineering feat, but also being able to have enabling any company to have that functionality is fantastic, I think. And it's probably really enhances the experience with a lot of audio products or products that have audio built in with it. And I think it's it's really impressive. I, I'm, I'm just curious to build off of that, especially for this example of a product. I know you're pretty active in the car industry at the moment. And you have a lot of really impressive, uh, you mentioned earlier with Tesla and BMW, you have a lot of customers in this segment. I'm just curious, maybe you could highlight on the customers that you work with today and some of the things that they're building. And even outside of that, outside of the automotive industry, can you share some examples of the devices uh, uh, the, that your products is in today? Mm -hmm. So one big trend we're seeing because of COVID is the rise of course, video conferencing. And if you think about how we use video conferencing, frankly, as I was sitting in front of the computer. And so people realize, oh, wait, why don't I also add that into TVs? So if you look at TVs, I think about probably 70 or 80% of the TVs now are smart TV. So what does that mean? Now you have the, your TV is instead of just serving content, is now connected enough and all you need to add is a microphone and video and now you have an interactive kind of device just very much of the pc right and so we're seeing a lot of products coming along in fact we have our customers are all the top names if you search the top market shareholders of every one of these products they're pretty much they are customers so they're shipping with voice to search content. So if you're sitting there trying to watch a show, do you want to scroll through with your remote and click every letter? Oh, wrong spelling, back up, back up, back up. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> By the time you find a content, half hours passed away. So you want to just talk to the thing and say, just pull up the content I'm interested to, to see. So TVs want to have voice. They also want to add voice conferencing right on TV. And so you can see products like already like Facebook portals. It's a first generation of adding voice communications. Okay. And so now you're interacting. So what that brings is also products like exercise machines. Now there's some top names there. If you're in New York, there's a top guy there that is selling interactive exercise equipment. So when you interact, what do you need? You need to be able to talk to the machine as you're running, perhaps there's pounding sounds. How do you want your machine to still hear you and interpret the right things? Then you wanna have immersive sound so that it makes your workout so much better, more real. And then they also want interaction. So now they're applying AI to the way if you're having the correct form, audio is pretty much in everything. You want to put it in everything and it's having, it's a long time coming. Okay. Like the technology, we've always have everything else, visual audio, you know, visual stuff, connectivity stuff, but audio is actually one of the first senses that you're born with. Okay. Before you're, you can touch and feel your hearing and we're missing a lot of that if we're not adding it as part of our daily routines and in, things that we interact with on machines. 
It's really impressive what you guys done with your platform. I think that your team mentioned that you power more than 50 million consumer and automotive products. And that's just mind blowing. It's uh, it's incredible uh, what you guys have built so far today and the reach that you have. And it makes sense. I think one of the biggest challenges early on was it's hard to interact with audio products because the experience is not enjoyable because there's the complexity in it. and I, you can't blame the people that are trying to attempt to get into audio because it's almost impossible to build a solid interactive and valuable audio experience. It's just to engineer that is really difficult. Now that you've removed that barrier, the sky's the limit. And if you don't mind, I can maybe share one of our customers is GoPro. And so I, we've known GoPro for a while. And I don't know, I think most people here know about GoPro and you can go back to the very, very beginning stages of GoPro when Nick Woodman just cared about making a video of him. What do you call that? <laughs> Surfing. It was really mainly driven by that. It's an you know, action camera. And I remember going to my son's high school and seeing people recording with GoPro and then separately, he has this big, long microphone to try to capture the micro, the audio part. And the reason is that all of you would know what it sounds like when you're outside and then there's wind blowing and it can, can inundate the microphone. So all you hear is, like, right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I need to explain that. We all know what that sounds like. So. I, Eventually, I I contacted GoPro and I, you know, you guys need to fix that. <laughs> they did come to us eventually. They said, yeah, we're ready now for some audio help. And except that we shopped around and then we can't find anything that can remove wind for our type of usage case where we pe our people jump out of the airplanes. All right, they're going, <laughs> we need something that kicks out of 100 mile per hour wind. Nick Woodman also is a car racer. He likes to race cars. He would put his GoPro in the car. And then there's a lot of bike, bike biker people who mount the GoPro on their um, bikes. What's the brand that, you know? The, Are the motorcycles? Yeah, it has a special sound. And so people really want the special sound. They want the action sound. They don't want it changed at all. Okay, and yet you, we want to remove the annoying wind sound. So there's no off the shelf anything that you can find to do that. So luckily we had Audio Weaver. So we raked up something over the weekend and show, hey, what do you think of it? They were like, whoa, this is much better than anything else out there. And it was only over the weekend. And then came the harder stuff is like, oh yes, you. we want you to filter out the the audio, the annoying audio, the wind noise, but you cannot change the sound of the engine. Okay. Because if I record an experience that I'm doing, let's say car racing or riding my motorcycle, I want that to capture that. That's part of my experience. I just don't want the wind noise, you know, there. And so even such difficult situations was able to be, you know, solved by audio weaver in a very quick way. And so now you can see the latest models of GoPro and they have much more advanced wind noise based on using audio reader. Oh, that's fantastic. That's incredible that you can enable brands to do uh, and companies to, to work with audio in a way so simply that they haven't been able to do before, especially over the concept of over a weekend. Just, yeah, we can do that. Just put something together. I want to shift- Harley Davidson, that's the- Yeah. Name. Uh, I want to shift gears away from a product a little bit and maybe a little bit, take a step back and generally talk about questions. But before I do that, I'm just curious for your platform, is this a traditional SaaS tool? Is the business model or for you just a license or subscription? Mm -hmm. We're primarily licensed by units because our customers do come in different sizes. We support very low volume customers that are very high end. So they only make 2000 things like Bullmeister. And then we also support very high volume customers. So the pricing does scale with the size of uh, production that they do. So that's how we price it. But mainly our, co co our co company has uh, three things, right? We got the tools, which we train people to use. We got the libraries that go into the products 
that you just configure and tune. And then we also provide design services. So we ensure that we help you to a successful product, even if you don't really know about audio. It feels like it's the, there's a tremendous amount of new smart devices and uh, the expectations of these devices are higher than I think ever been before. Uh, how do you think audio fits into this picture and in, in, in the future of all these different smart devices? Yeah, so it, there's two things to it. One is you want to be able to talk to it and you don't want it to react wrongly. When you have like false triggers or it, it just picks things up and think you're talking to it, you don't want that. So we actually can help with that. Okay, so one of the things, actually a friend of mine who works at Amazon told me in the early days, he had to take the devices home as part of the the testing and this is like years before any of us like in public saw that and he said the thing would just wake up in the middle of the night and then he scared the heck out of him right so that's definitely you don't want that if you have audio devices around the house and then the other expectation is the performance of even the playback so the problem is that if I point out the problems, you guys are going to go home and you're going to realize, oh yeah. One problem is we're now all streaming content. So if you have a smart speaker, oftentimes I say, play me the news. And so it's gathering news from different sources. And you will notice how if first NPR comes on and it's civilized talking, then Fox News comes on and it's really loud. And, blah, 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 blah. and so it just makes the whole experience very jarring, okay? So what we have is this volume leveling. And so we've been doing this for XM satellite radio, actually, because they're getting contents and they have 130 channels. And if you're switching channels, you don't want one really soft and you gotta now adjust the volume. And then you go to another channel and it's too loud and whoa. So it's those kind of experiences of, have to all come together when you have a smart device and then on top of that also you want good sounding quality device which has always been around like we all eventually start wanting to hear more immersive what more live more just better sound and so that's the demands of adding audio into products absolutely agree and i think audio is has even higher levels of criticism compared to any other type of medium because it's so easy to notice a slight mishap or a, something that's off. Or, and that's, I think that makes it, the whole process so much more challenging for anybody that's, whether it's creating content, is building a device, is trying to create an experience that users love. And it's just, you can't, that, that hurdle for audio is so steep or it used to be, but it's fantastic. Be, your platform is catering to that and, and building out a, a way in which users don't have to worry about that. I, I'm curious though, because we've, we've been through an interesting environment over the past year or so. We've gone through a pandemic and as a company, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious, has the pandemic affected your company or your industry at all? Yeah. Okay. The, the pandemic up, did affect the whole supply chain. So what even Biden is getting into here now to say, okay, we got to look at the supply chain. There's a shortage of semiconductors. Okay. And that everything is built up on that. Okay. So it did affect it that way. At the same time, the pandemic did force us to all work, you know, remotely. So in the last year, we actually doubled our headcount. Okay. And we onboarded everybody remotely. We now are spread around the globe everywhere. And even though we've onboarded all these new employees in engineering, the efficiency, we actually doubled the efficiency. So not only did people come on board, learn a new technology, now they're able to implement and support like concurrent projects, like tons of them. So that is a real life kind of testimony to the ease of use of our technology and deployment. Okay. And the other thing that I think what people learn is as we're doing video conferencing, okay. And we are all in conferencing all day long. You start to notice, and this is another point I'd like to point out is that we don't have full duplex. And what that means is 
when somebody else makes a noise, you notice how oh, it interrupts the flow. It inf in interrupts because it, you're getting muted. You're carrying, getting muted. So one of our people in our management team actually is a problem with the throat. So he often has to clear his throat. And when he does that, he doesn't mean to get into the conversation, but in doing so, the whole meeting jarring. And guess what? We actually have a solution for that. And I'm just, the pandemic has like brought out all these like problems that now we see in audio, which I think, you know, points out to the importance of implementing good audio. And we're looking forward to using that, this opportunity to get more into more innovative products. I had one last question before we close out, Chin, but again, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I'm just curious, where do you think the future of audio engineering is going and what do you see that most people don't? So audio engineering is becoming sexy and people don't know this, especially the young people. They go into college, they're studying and they actually, frankly, find an easier path. Okay. And study other stuff because audio is just difficult. You have to do all this digital signal processing. Yeah. It's like really difficult subject to get through. You know what, because now we're making it easy and it's fun. Our engineers have fun when they are solving audio problems and they get to enjoy the products that they actually help to make. So I think that we are going to actually change the way audio engineering jobs are going to be and love to be playing a big part of that. And it's going to be a night of it's all our, we're going to be having a company concert people in, I have the most talented employees. They all love audio and music. Okay. Yeah. And so it's audio. It's just a fun field to be in. And now it is going to make it easier. Uh, well, this has been fantastic. I really appreciate you taking the time and, and answering all my questions before I close out. Did you have any other things that you want to give any ask or things you'd like to announce or share with the audience? Yeah, I'd be interested if people wanted to reach out to me who are dealing with startups and interested in understanding how audio can add to their portfolio of things as a, it's very possible to do now. It's not a hard thing. If you know the right way to approach it, you don't need a huge team that we see in some cases, very small teams can handle. I think Tesla's got a very small audio team actually, and they have the best audio in their car. Fantastic. Absolutely. I, I highly recommend uh, everyone to continue to uh, check out the, the platform that you built and all the modules that you have and some of the feature set. And I'm sure a lot of individuals at the conference would definitely be interested given that it's a big focus on media. But Shin, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. And again, for the audience, why we had this conversation, we looked at over hundreds of companies in the audio platform space. And one of the companies that really stood out to us was DSP Concepts. Uh, and for the reasons that you heard today, you guys are taking on this bold vision of being the industry standard platform for audio engineering. And how you've done that is you've both taken the complexity of matching both the hardware and the engineering of audio products, but then also being able to uh, match that with audio experiences in a platform that's a simple interface that requires no code. You can plug in any module, you already pre-build modules, you even help and support your customers if they want some help uh, with building out uh, audio tools. And you already gave us examples today, what you did with GoPro, what you did with BMW and others, but they have some really complex problems that before is almost impossible to solve. And you can do that in 20 minutes or you can do it over a weekend. And that's completely going to change the audio experience. And I think a lot of people realize that you're already in over 50 million different devices and, and uh, automotive products. And I think that uh, trend is going to continue. So I highly encourage uh, everyone to check out DSP concepts and the things that you're doing. And thank you again, Chin, for taking the time to share a little bit more about your company platform. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Kyle.